Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We were having some technical difficulties, but let me start by saying um, the music you heard playing uh, is not our own. We don't have the rights to this music. Let me make this disclaimer once again. The music that you are hearing, we don't own the rights to this music. It is not our own. But we thank God that we are here tonight. We are able to come once again in his presence uh, with singing. We are grateful that we're able to come before his presence with thanksgiving. And my prayer tonight to you is... I pray that your soul is anchored in the Lord. Uh, during this season, this time, uh, this spiritual warfare that we are going through, I pray, my prayer is, is that you are anchored in the Lord. Uh, once again, let me make this disclaimer. This is not my own music. I don't own the rights. But I am grateful to God for my being here and thank God for all of you. Uh, certainly, I am grateful to be here once again on this Wednesday evening. I do apologize for us coming on a, a little bit late. Uh, the devil is a lie. Uh, we were having a few little technical difficulties uh, trying to get on. But needless to say, the victory is ours, says the Lord. And so we are here once again, uh, and I am grateful for my being here. Uh, certainly, uh, we honor the Lord, and I thank God for all of you who have tuned in on this live. Uh, you know we have been talking about drifting, and so it's only right for so that we hear in the background, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Because in this season, you have to be anchored. Amen, somebody. You have to be secure in your relationship with God. Uh, so many people have drifted. So many people are drifting. So many people have turned their back on the faith. And I'm so glad today that uh, to know that there are so many who have not given up on God because as the songwriter once said, God has not given up on you. And so I am glad, uh, Pastor Brooks, amen. God bless you, my brother. I, I should have called you. But I thank God for all of you uh, being here. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, we bless you, God, we give you honor, God, we thank you for this day, that this is the day that you've made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, God, we thank you for this opportunity, God, to study your precious holy word, God, we pray, God, that right now, uh, your word makes a difference in our life, Father, those that have maybe drifted, God, you will bring them back ashore, and then, God, those who have been standing strong, who have been rooted and grounded, God, you will continue to strengthen us through your word. God, we realize that, God, your word is for a time such as these, God, uh, when the world uh, is at its hardest and most crucial moment, when uh, the skies become the darkest, God, when our situation become the hardest, that's when your word, God, becomes, uh, that's when your word shows up uh, more powerful than ever before. And so tonight, God, we bless you, God, we give you honor, God, we thank you for your word, God, and we thank you for your son who is the word. And God, we ask right now, Lord, that we can leave better than how we came in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, certainly, we thank God once again uh, for our soul being anchored in the Lord. Thank you for tuning in tonight uh, once again to uh, our hour of power. Amen. And by me coming on late, I'm going to try to hurry up uh, so that uh, we are not all night. Amen. Uh, drifting. We've been talking about, are you drifting? Amen. Uh, and I know that uh, for some people really don't grasp 
the drifting aspect of it because some people say, well, I'm just taking a break. Amen. But you can never take a break from God. <laughs> Amen. You know, your relationship with God is not like your relationship with man or woman where you can just say, we're taking a break right now trying to figure things out. Uh, life is too short and life is too dangerous not to have God every moment in your life. Uh, you, you can't uh, decipher or you can't discern what the next moment is going to bring in your life. But we know who holds and controls every moment in our life. And so therefore, we have to make sure that our anchor is secure. And how do I make sure my anchor is secure? I make sure my anchor is secure by staying connected to the one who keeps me stable. And that is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So last week we talked about uh, uh, things that we should know about drifting. Drifting requires no effort. We talked about that. It is an unconscious process. We talked about that last week. And we never drift up against the tide. We talked about that. And tonight, I want to look at the speed downstream increases. And what that means is uh, whenever you start to drift away from God and you begin to drift downstream, uh, you always speed up going downstream than going upstream, which means that uh, whenever you start to separate from God, it is a quicker process than you coming to God. Amen, somebody. Because we can be connected today and disconnected on tomorrow. There's a danger in the increase and in the speed of the drift. Well, well, what do you mean? Uh, because uh, one of the things that I've discovered uh, in, in the speed of the drift, it means that uh, today God can have my heart. He can have my mind. He can have everything that belongs to him because everything comes from him. And in a moment, I can be turned off by God and God is no longer the focal point of my life. Let, let, let me help you out. One of the signs that I'm drifting quickly downstream is you are frustrated or angry with God. And uh, let's just be real. All of us have come to a place where we have questioned uh, the actions of God. We have questioned the things that God have allowed to happen in our life. I, I, I know uh, uh, there are some people who have lost some people close to them, have lost some loved ones. And in the depth of their loved ones, there's a part of them because they didn't understand the plan and the will and the purpose for them losing them that they felt like they needed, uh, they became angry or, or better yet, they become, they be question God. And sometimes when you question God and you don't get the answer that you're looking for, you can become angry or bitter at God. And so there are some people uh, who have drifted from God based off the anger or the frustration that they have with God. I know I'm, I'm teaching tonight. There are some people who uh, today, right now, they are no longer connected to the body of Christ because uh, they feel like God has let them down. Uh, there are some people who were on their knees praying for situations and circumstances that didn't turn out in their favor and they're trying to figure out, then why am I praying the way I'm praying? Why am I going through what I'm going through if God is not going to approve the prayer that I have laid before him. And I just came to tell you that don't let your frustration, don't let your anger, don't let your bitterness, don't, don't let your, uh, uh, not un your misunderstanding cause you to drift from the love of God. Because even if things do not work out in your favor, it does not, uh, does not mean that God does not love you and you're not still favorable in God's sight. 
And so there's some people who have drifted because they are frustrated and angry. Let, let, let's look at uh, some scriptures and, 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 and we can uh, hurry to our close for the night. Uh, let's look at Psalms 34. If you don't mind, Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and verse number verse number 18, if I can hurry and get there with you. Psalms 34 and verse 18. Amen. Let, let, let's look at it. Verse 18 says, the Lord is near the brokenhearted. So in other words, you don't have to drift from God in the moments of your frustration. You don't, you don't have to give up on God because you don't understand why he allowed what happened to you, what happened to your family, what happened to your marriage, what happened to your job, uh, what, what happened in your circumstance or situation. You don't have to get so frustrated uh, and angry with God that you allow yourself to disconnect from God because the Bible just tell, just told us in Psalms 34 and 18 that the Lord is near the brokenhearted. In other words, if God does not pull you out favorable in your situation, if he does not allow your loved ones to live uh, in a situation where Maybe uh, leaving here is better than staying is what Paul said uh, in situations like that. God says, you know what? Even though uh, I, I, I may not answer the prayer the way you want to answer, I'm still here to console you during the transition of your love. I'm here to help you while you're going through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm here to hold your hand, to show you that I'm here and I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. But the problem is in our frustration, the problem is in our despair, the problem is is our misunderstanding. We will cut get angry with God, and therefore we will drift away from God. But baby, you better do like the songwriter said. Yo, you better make sure that your soul has been anchored in the Lord. So he said, the Lord is near the brokenhearted. Watch this. He delivered those who are discouraged. So it's in your moments that you do not understand, Sister Fisher. It's in the moments where you are uh, late at night when you are in your feelings and, and maybe uh, the eyes begin to well up. It's in those moments that if you look toward the hill for which comes your help, God will certainly show up on your behalf. So some people drift because they're frustrated. Some people, uh, Brother Oscar, they drift because uh, they are angry with God. Uh, Sister Joni, some people drift because uh, they have yet to gain the knowledge and understanding that they need of who God is. Uh, Sometimes they uh, don't understand, uh, Minister Achenard, the fact that uh, God is sovereign. Hey, God, I bless your name. And he loves us unconditionally. And God will never do anything purposely to hurt us. But everything he allows in our life is for our benefit. It's for our growth. It's for us to grow spiritually. Amen. In the knowledge and understanding of who he is. So verse 19 tells us in that Psalms, it said, The godly face many dangers. Amen. The old songwriter would say, Many dangers I've seen. The godly face many dangers, watch this, but the Lord saved them from each one of them. The King James said, uh, many are afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. So you shouldn't drift just because you get caught up in a moment of your feelings. Don't get angry with God. Don't, don't get upset with God that you allow the enemy to come in and fool you or make a fool out of you. But you ought to stay connected. Somebody ought to type that on the screen. Stay connected. Amen. Stay connected. Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter number 1. James chapter 1. Amen. James chapter 1. We are talking about the fact that 
people will drift out of frustration, being frustrated with God or angry with God. Amen. Let's go. James chapter one, verse 19 says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch this. Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. Anybody ever got upset because you were not listening to every word that came out of the person's mouth? And because you misunderstood, because you didn't hear everything, you got an attitude and found yourself being angry with somebody based off what you thought they said uh, and not what they actually said. That, that's the worst thing that can happen to us is for us to get angry. But we ought to be slow, quick to listen. Amen. Hear the voice of God. Slow to speak. Because if you ever speak in anger, you will always live to be apologet apologetic. Because whenever we speak out of anger, whenever we misstep, we always live to regret what we've said. Slow to speak and slow to anger. For watch this, verse 20. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. So in other words, nothing good comes when I get angry. And that's the problem with some people who have drifted or falling away from the church. The old church would say uh, they have backslidden. Amen. But, but everybody has not necessarily backslidden. They just are not what they once were, which means they have drifted. And if you get angry with God, you can't tell me that you won't drift. Amen, somebody. Let's look at Ephesians right fast since we are... In the New Testament, amen. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter number 4. Amen. Uh, turn with me to verse 26. Let me get there. 26, watch this. It says, be, be angry, but do not sin. And, and, and what normally happens is when we get angry uh, with somebody or even God, that's the first thing happens is because uh, usually with anger comes cuss words. Y'all better talk to me tonight. <laughs> it ain't many people that can get angry and, and, and control that tongue. That's why James said that a, that a man that can control his tongue, he can control everything. Do not let the sun go down on the cause of your anger. In other words, uh, you ought not to fester in that all day and all night. Amen. Verse 27 says, do not give the devil an opportunity. In other words, when you get mad, you give the enemy an opportunity to make a fool of you. Woo. And, and, and that's what happens. You've got to be, and I hate to use that word, but you've got to be out of your mind to drift from somebody who has been taking care of you, who has been your way, your bridge, your food, amen. He has been the one who has uh, been taking care of you. Even when you didn't know you was being taken care of, he has been that person. Don't let the enemy, don't give room to the enemy. Don't allow the devil, uh, old season saint would say, uh, don't, don't let the enemy drive. Or don't let him ride because you let him ride, he want to drive. Amen. Let, let's drop down in that same, same book. Uh, let's drop down to verse 29. It says, you must let no whole unwholesome words come out of your mouth, but only what is beneficial for the building up of the one in need, that it may give grace to those who hear it. So in other words, when rather than getting angry and, and saying all these outlandish things, I ought to watch what I say because what I say affects everybody around me, which brings me to the next point I want to make. People that are drifting stop going to church. And one of the reasons why they stop going to church is there's a thing called church hurt. Somebody type that, church hurt. Church hurt. Amen. That's a, that, that's a real thing. 
There are some people who have been hurt in the church. Amen. By people who don't understand uh, as Christians, we're supposed to love unconditionally. And so uh, there are some people who have been hurt by those who uh, they uh, have uh, allowed themselves to be vulnerable to. Y'all remember uh, uh, Mephibosheth, who was the son of Jonathan, grandson of Saul. Uh, he was, the Bible said, that he had a nanny who was taking care of him. And in the midst of, of chaos, in the midst of what she perceived that her life and his life was in danger, in her haste to run, she dropped him and he was disabled uh, by both of his legs being broken. And here it is, he ends up in a place called Lodabar, a place of destitute, uh, where, where nothing grows, only death is all around him. And yet he ends up in this place because the person that he trusted the most, the person that he believed in, the person that should have been loving and caring and comforting and taking care of him is the person that hurt him. And in the church, a lot of times, people will drift from the body of Christ will drift from God because they have been hurt by those around them that should have been loving and taking care of. The Bible said we are known as his disciples by the love we show one towards another. There's not enough love in the body of Christ. The not the same, not the love that God has for us, that unconditional love. We love those who we are closest to, but those that we're not uh, we fellowship. The Bible never told us to like nobody. And we have this thing where I like them and I don't like them. But the Bible says, love. he never gave us the option to like nobody, but he told us to love one another. And we've got to learn how to love folk. Amen. If folk can love you with your nasty attitude, you ought to be able to love somebody else. In fact, if you can love yourself knowing that you are jacked up from the flow up, then you ought to be able to love somebody else. And so people stop going to church because, uh, and drift from God because of church hurt. Amen. Woo. Bless you. But because of church hurt. Watch this. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter number eight. Y'all, excuse me. Luke chapter number eight. Let's go there. Luke chapter number eight. Start at verse number four. Amen. And you have to be rooted and grounded. Amen. That you don't allow people to cause you to drift. People are going to be people. Uh, I, I read a story about a woman who was in church and after service, she went up to the pastor and told him, uh, I'm leaving this church and I'm never coming back. And the pastor said, ma'am, can I ask you why? She said, because during service, I saw people on their phones. And, and there were people who wasn't paying attention. There were people who were talking to one another. And there were people who was, was sleeping. And so the pastor said, well, before you leave, can I give you an, an assignment? Amen. So he told, I'm going to give you this glass of water. And during service, I want you to just walk around the church and concentrate on the glass of water. Concentrate on not spilling a drop of the water out of the glass. And so the lady, all doing service, was walking very gingerly and carefully holding the glass of water, making sure even though it may have shaken in the glass that she didn't lose a drop. So after church, she comes to the pastor and says, Pastor, I, 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 I did just what you asked me. I carried the water and I didn't lose not one drop of water out of the glass. And the pastor asked why, well, why you were carrying the glass? Did you see anybody on the phone? And she said, no, pastor, I, 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 I was too busy, uh, carrying the water, concentrating. He said, did you see anybody who wasn't paying attention? And did you see anybody who was sleeping? And she said, no, because I was 
concentrating on the water. He said, well, this is what I need you to do next week. He said, if you would concentrate on the word of God, if you would concentrate on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the same way you concentrated on that water. He said, you wouldn't have time to see who was doing what and who wasn't doing what because you would be concentrating on what is necessary for your life. And that's the problem in the church. So many people are worried about the wrong thing. And this is why people have uh, experienced church hurt is because we are Oh, God, I bless your one. We are so concerned about things that are not of God that we sometimes miss the things of God. And we got to come back to the place, the place of repentance where God is first in our life. His word is what uh, uh, should indwell on the inside of us and cause us to come to a place, a hey God where he is the one and only that we see when we come to the house. That's where, where, where our worship is released because when we are concentrating on our Lord and Savior, I, I dare you to sit in church and not open your mouth. I, I dare you to sit in church and not be able to wave your hand. I, I dare you to be in church and not feel the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And so people start to drift because the church hurt. They will stop going to church and worshiping God. But let's look at Luke chapter 8, verse number 4 says, talks about the word and how, and where it failed. Amen. The word is so important because it's the word that keeps us grounded. Amen. No matter what's happening around us, the word keeps us grounded. So he says in verse number 4, while a large crowd was gathering, people were coming to Jesus one town after another. And he spoke these parables. Amen. Verse five says, and I'm reading from Luke chapter eight, the New England trend. He said, a soul went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled down. Amen. And the wild birds devoured it and others fell on rocks. And when it came up, it withered because it had no moisture. That's the one I want to stand on right there. It fell on rocks. And when it came up, it withered because it had no moisture. In other words, it fell in a dry place. Amen. And whenever you are distracted, you will never get the nourishments that you need. Because the word represents the seed. So in other words, the seed fell in a place that was rocky and dry. And too many of us uh, are not connected enough <laughs> that we are dry on the inside. Y'all better help me tonight. And that's why the word has not took root and grown. Let's drop down. Uh, because I, I wasn't going to read all of them, but let's, let's drop down. Verse 13 in that same book. Watch this. He's going to show you what the rocks represent. Those on rocks are the ones, watch this, who receive the word with joy. So in other words, you show up at church and you get a word from the Lord and you receive it with joy, which means it gladdens your heart. And then he says, uh, those, are the, are the, those on the rocks are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no roots. Amen. Don't be the one in the church who hears a word but because you have no roots, watch this. It said, they believe for a while, but in a time of testing, fall away. So in other words, God sends you what you need, but because you're not rooted and grounded in the word, which means you don't have no roots. So now it, 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 it accomplished what God has set it out to do. But because when testing come, you forget everything that you heard. And that's the problem uh, we have with church hurt is God sends you a word, but you forget it because you have no root. So now when people do things to you, you're the first ones to leave the church, leave the, the body of Christ, leave God altogether. And there's a lot of people who are not rooted and grounded who have given up 
on God. Let's go to Hebrews. This is going to be a little harsh, but it's what we need. Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm hurrying. Hebrews chapter 6. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Hebrews chapter 6. And let's go to verse number 4. Verse 4 said, It is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened. That's the thing about falling away from God. For it is, a, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, become partakers of the Holy Spirit. You've experienced all of God, what God asks you or has for you. Verse 5 said, Tasted the good word of God and the miracles of of the coming. So in other words, you've experienced everything God has. Verse 6 says, and then have committed apostasy. Apostasy means you're falling away. It says, it is hard to, it, 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 verse 6 says, to renew them again to repentance since they are crucifying the son of God for themselves all over again, holding him up to contempt. So in other words, when you have been one who have experienced God, the Bible said it's almost hard. It's hard to bring them back to the fold. It's hard to bring them back to a place of repentance once you have fallen away. Because, you know, once you have experienced something and left it, a lot of times we have this mindset, I done been there, done that. Uh, I ain't got to go back there. But, baby, you need God in your life. Amen. You can't walk away. You can't give up. Amen to Sheila. You got to stay rooted and ground. That's why the Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is, once you have experienced his goodness, I don't know how you can walk away. Watch this here. My last point I'm going to make for tonight, because I told you I wasn't going to hold you long. I know I came on late, but I want to keep you interested. Uh, the last point I want to make in the speeding downhill increases is you feel lukewarm about the gospel. We know in the book of Revelation, he talked about don't be, don't be lukewarm. How he will spew you out of his mouth. You need to be hot or cold. God rather for you to be on fire for him or to be straight up against him. But don't be lukewarm. And there's a lot of people who have drifted because they were lukewarm. Amen. You can only stay, uh, you can only stay, uh, warm when you stay closest to the fire. Amen. Let, let's look at something. Let's look at second Peter, second Peter, second Peter, second Peter, second Peter chapter one. Let's go there real quick. Second Peter chapter one. Uh, Let, let's let's look at uh, verse number two. Verse, let, you know what? I can just start at verse number one, and I'll I'll go to verse number five, and that's where. Uh, well, actually, uh, we may stop at verse number seven. Let's let's read real quick. Uh, verse one says, and I'm reading from New English Translation. It says, "From Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who brought the righteousness of our God, our God and Savior Jesus Christ, have granted a faith that had." that as precious as ours, <clears throat> excuse me, may grace and peace be lavished on you as you grow, watch this, in the right knowledge of God. So he says, grace and peace, God's love, his peace be lavished on you as you grow in the rich knowledge of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, now, let me read this from the Message Bible. Simon Peter, as a servant of the Apostle Jesus Christ, I write this to you, whose experience with God is a life-changing, is a life-changing as ours, all due to our God's straight dealing and intervene of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch this. Grace and peace to you many times over, as you deepen in your experience with God and Jesus, our master. So in other words, you have to grow in the knowledge and understanding of who God is. If, if, if you're going to uh, be able to be uh, rooted and grounded, if you're, you're going to be able to be secure 
Amen. You've got to grow in God. And the problem with some people who have drifted is their growth was stunted. They stopped growing. And whenever you become stagnant, you are vulnerable to drifting. A boat that whose motor has become disabled is, watch this, they are subject to the currents, which means the currents normally won't wash you ashore, but wash you out to sea. Whenever you become stagnant, you are in danger of the enemy causing you to drift. Verse 3 says, Everything that goes on into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know, watch this, personally and intimately. So God has given us everything we need to know him personally and intimately. That word intimately, I had to look it up because it said, watch this, it involves detailed knowledge or it involves a close link or relationship. There's some things you only going to know about a person once you have become intimate. I'm not talking about uh, sexually. Amen. Come on, bring your mind out the gutter. But I'm talking about when you are open with someone and y'all sit down and become transparent. God will always be transparent with us. But the problem is we are never transparent with him. Even though he knows us uh, completely, we still are never truthful with God. We don't ever come to God and say, God, I need you to help me right now because I'm messed up. I'm jacked up. God, you know I got an attitude. You know sometimes I don't like people. I, you, 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 you. We don't never be real with God so God can be real with us. If you're ever going to be delivered from whatever is holding you back, baby, you're going to have to be real with God. So intimately, it... Uh, it, 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 it is, it is, it's involved in a private and personal way. Amen. Which means that we have to, uh, be private with God, meaning that we ought to have a closet that we go to God in prayer away from everybody else. It, it's about a personal relationship. And that's the only way, uh, you can stop from drifting is you have to have a personal relationship with God. It has to be personal. Well, you know God for your, not based off what folk have told you, uh, but you know him for yourself. Anybody ever had someone try to tell some tell you about somebody and you'd be like, no, 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 I know them. I don't need you to tell me nothing about them. I don't need you to say nothing about them because I know how they are because I know them personally. Maybe you just experienced them on a bad day, but I know them for myself. You can talk about anybody else, but not them because I know them. That's the way it is. We ought to be with God. We ought to know him uh, without a shadow of a doubt. And so he says uh, in verse four, he said the best invitation, watch this. The best invitation we received, we were also given absolute terrific promise to pass on to you your tickets to participation in the life of God after you turn your back on a world corrupt. Amen. Verse five says, so don't lose a minute in building on what you have been given. So you got to keep on building, which means you got to keep on growing. He says, uh, don't lose a minute in building on what you have been given, uh, complementing your basic faith with good character. So we got to continue to grow in character. Spiritual understanding. It's only in intimacy that we learn God unconditionally. Uh, we spiritually come to an understanding of him. Uh, alert discipline. Passionate patience. Reverend wondering. Let me, let me, let me go to, uh, to my, my translation. Uh, New English translation. New, New English translation says, For this very reason, make effort to add to your faith excellent. Which means that with, with, with my faith comes me growing in the personality of who God is. Mm. To excellent knowledge, I've got to know him for myself. To knowledge, self-control. So in other words, you've got to get to a place that when you become mature, mature enough, that you're able to control your feelings because your feelings will cause you to drift. 
That's why some people have been hurt in the church because they've been in their feelings. Amen. More so spiritually. And to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly affection. To brotherly affection, unselfish love. These are some of the things that God requires of us that we grow. And some of us, some people, should I say, have drifted because they have stopped growing. They have allowed excuses. Church hurt is a real thing. Don't get me wrong. But I would not let church hurt drive me away from the love of God. Not from my connection with God. I would not allow uh, my frustration because God did not answer my prayer the way I thought he would. And so I wouldn't let my anger, watch this. Oh God, bless your name. Uh, the three Hebrew boys are thrown in the furnace. What if they had have been bigger, bitter and angry with God because they were thrown in? What if they had a said, what if they had a worship the king? What if they had a said, what if God don't show up right now? Then you got us. We, we're sold out for you. If, if, if our God does not save us right now, what if they had went that route? But instead they said, even if God does not save us right now this moment, he's still God and will never serve you. And the Bible said that they were thrown in this fire that was turned up seven times hotter. And the Bible said that when they went to check on them, they said, did we not throw in three? But I see four of them walking around. If they had a became angry and bitter, they would have never came out of the fire. And somebody may say, well, they've never went in. But you don't know that. But what I'm trying to say is, we should never drift and disconnect from God because God will never disconnect from us. Amen. What, what, what about Daniel? What if, what if Daniel had not went into prayer? What if he had a... Uh, uh, succumb to the decree that nobody could worship another God or, or pray to another God. And he had to went home and the practice of praying three times a day. What if he had to decided that day, I'm no longer going to pray to the God that I've served and my ancestors have served. What if he had to decide that this is the last time I'm not going to pray to him anymore. God wouldn't have been the one who showed up in the lion's den and closed the lion's mouth. Amen. And what I'm trying to tell you today is no matter what you go through, you ought to always stay connected to God. Don't let your circumstance or your situation cause you to drift from God. At the end of the day, God is who you need. And if God is all you have, he is all you need. Amen, somebody. Amen. Are you drifting? Amen. This is a word for somebody. Don't let, it, don't let your frustration and your anger. Don't let church hurt cause you not to worship. And don't be lukewarm to the gospel of Christ. But find a way to be rooted in, like we talked about Sunday. Find a way to be rooted and grounded so that your soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. Let's have prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you, God. We thank you for your word. And God, I pray tonight, God, that something has been said to strengthen our roots, God. Because like the songwriter said, there's a storm out in the ocean and it's moving this old way. And if our soul is not anchored in Jesus, we should surely drift away. God, I'm asking right now, as, as storms come our way, as we are going through storms and dealing with storms right now, that our roots are strong enough, God, in your word, that we're able to stand, God, uh, in spite of the winds. We're able to stand. Father, we're able to stand still and see your continual salvation. Salvation means deliverance, your defense, God. Father, we love you tonight. We bless you, God. We ask for forgiveness for all our sins, God. We ask God tonight, Lord, that you would look down on our family members, our friends, even our enemies, God. We're asking that your face would shine upon them. God, I'm asking that you would call us back to a place that we once were in you. Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we love you. 
in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen. Look, uh, drifting is a real thing and it happens to the best. All it takes is uh, for us to just stop being as devoted as we once were to God. And we'll find that it's so easy to drift. And I'm asking you to continue to stay in prayer, stay connected, stay reading your word uh, because God loves you. And in spite of all that you may go through, God loves you. I had a hectic day on yesterday and for a minute I was kind of like frustrated. But you know what? God loves me and I know he does and he loves you. Amen. Go in peace. God bless you is my prayer. Amen.